On this video, I'm having another crack at trying to perfect my pale ales. Hi, I'm Daryl and welcome to my channel. Um, I took a little break from my usual videos and recently made an elderflower cordial video which uh, is probably the best looking video that I've ever made that no one ever looked at. <laughs> um, please like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> give that video a watch um, because uh, currently less than 200 people have looked at it and I put so much work into it. I mean, I borrowed my friend's very expensive camera for that video and no one watched it. Uh, I mean, elderflower season's currently over, so <laughs> you're not gonna be able to do much with the information you garner from it unless you're watching this in 2023. Um, and if that's the case, uh, I, I hope it's going well. Um, you know, <sighs> 2022. Anyway, uh, it, since my last video, I, I also went semi-viral on TikTok. It turns out Gen Zers are quite interested in how to remove labels from bottles. Of course, uh, few of them can afford this hobby um, unless uh, they, I don't know, uh, nepotism <laughs> is probably the only solution for them at this point. I mean, I can barely afford this hobby due to uh, gas prices. <laughs> anyway, look, I'm back with um, another brew day today. I'm gonna be doing a very similar pale ale to what I did last time. So you can watch that video here. Um, apart from this time, rather than having Centennial and um, Simcoe hops, I'm going to be swapping out the Simcoe for mosaic hops because they're some of the only hops that I have left at the moment. And Centennial and Mosaic is a pretty decent combination of hops. I'm really enjoying this dual hop um, vibe at the moment. I have had bad experiences of going a bit overboard with the number of hops I've used, but single hopped, dual hopped, gone really well for me. And on this brood, I also use a very similar malt build to the time before. Why break what's not fixed, eh? But, um, this felt like it was a really good um, mix of malts that tasted nice. I increased the amount of um, amber malt I used due to the fact that I wanted to use it up, just get rid of it, you know. Um, I've got a lot of malts that I need to use up really, uh, which it feels like I've been trying to do for a year now, <laughs> but uh, so I'm a bit concerned about uh, some of the use by date. I increased the amber malt because of that. I swapped out the flaked barley for flaked oats um, for similar reasons, really. I've got some flaked oats, which are what I use up and uh, I'd be interested to know the difference between the two, really. The other thing that I changed was that I use Kvike Voss yeast here rather than Lutra. That was really because I haven't used Voss in ages. I want to be reminded as to how lovely Voss is, as I've kind of become a real a Lutra head um, <laughs> recently. Voss and Lutra are both types of Kvike yeast. Um, I've talked so much about how much I love Kvike yeast here. So on this brew day, I use the exact same water profile that I used on my last pale ale. Um, this is a water profile that I kind of nabbed from the apartment brewer, but it works really well. Um, for me, it just requires me to use some Epsom salts and some table salt. Uh, which is quite easy to get a hold of. My beer smith free worked out for me. Um, go onto your water provider's website if you want to find out your tap water's profile or just use bottled water. I'm not gonna bore you here with my uh, pH routine. I've been trying to dial down my pH um, for a while now and I've got a pH reader, which I really love, which has massively helped me. There's a link to it down below if you want to support this channel via Amazon. Every time I mention pHs, it seems that like I set a fire in the comments. I've been personally altering the pH before I mash. I know that other people sort out the pH during the mash and that I think the proper way is to do it during the mash. But for me, it's worked out well doing it before, but maybe it's just luck. Um, but I do test during the mash and after the mash and the pH does remain for me, but that might just be because I've been mostly doing pales recently and darker beers may have a different effect. So don't quote me on this. Maybe you want to start a fire in the comments and just let me know when do you do your pH, all right? 
all right? When do you do it, okay? Because that's clearly the best way to do it, okay? Uh, <laughs> sorry, getting aggy. This time round, I put some kettle water in a pot and set it aside. This is to be used to pour over my grain bag later on in the process to try and maximize my efficiency. For this recipe, I used four and a half kilograms of Maris Ossa as the base malt. 585 grams of amber malt to add a biscuity flavor and to darken the beer. Uh, this is quite a lot of amber malt, but as I said earlier, I wanted to see what it did, <laughs> ultimately. Um, I also used 568 grams of Vienna malt for color and flavor and 200 grams of flaked oats for body. Whilst my water was heating up before my mash, um, I also measured out my hops. Um, I also forgot to film the start of this, but basically my hop additions are 15 grams of Centennial for the 30 minute boil, 12 grams of Centennial for 20 minutes before the end, eight grams of Centennial and seven grams of Mosaic for halfway through, eight grams of Centennial and 10 grams of Mosaic for 10 minutes in, then 40 grams of Mosaic and 20 grams of Centennial for a big hop stand. I also later on added 40 grams of Mosaic and 20 grams of Centennial as a dry hop. I did this as a dip hop. I've previously spoken about how much I like this. Um, it's a, a method that uses magnets. I accidentally started doing it when I tried doing um, a magnet release way of uh, putting in dry hops, but um, it was dipping in. So I mashed my grains for an hour before doing a mash out. Uh, mash out's another one of these processes that I do, but I'm not 100% sure if I really need to do it. It's quite often used to like get consistency, but I'm one of these people who brew something completely different every time. So I don't really know if I need to worry too much about getting an absolutely consistent taste from my beers. You know, I feel like a lot of home brewers never brew the same thing twice. So I don't know if the mash out is completely uh, necessary, but hey, I'm doing it. I'm part of Team Squeeze when it comes to the grain bag after you have done the mash with brewing a bag. So I squeezed it after I had poured over some of that hot kettle water. I increased the temperature of that to 65 degrees so that it was matching the mash temperature. So after I squeezed it, it was then time to heat up and get my hop schedule. 15 minutes in, I put in my copper cooling coil, yeast nutrient 10 minutes in, Irish moss 10 minutes in, you know the drill. This is kind of how I always brew uh, and it works for me. When the boil was done, I cooled it all down to 40 degrees and then did a 15 minute hop stand. When the hop stand was done, I then um, transferred to my fermenter. It was at this point that I then prepared my dry hop. I used a food grade muslin bag to hold those dry hops and you know dangle in with neodymium magnets, the best ones that I could find in the UK because we don't like sous videing. Then I added my Kvike Voss yeast. Very excited to drink something with Kvike Voss in it again because I've kind of forgotten that flavor. It took less than 24 hours for fermentation to kick in and actually after six days it was time to bottle which was uh, fantastic obviously. And it's actually been like two months since I um, did that. I've, I've not brewed since. I've been really busy. I've been preparing for my wedding. Um, and, oh, stop, stop. And I've been making elderflower cordial videos that no one watched. Uh, so yeah, this is uh, my first opportunity to taste this beer for you. Um, I've had one or two of them, but I can't really remember drinking them. Uh, so this is a bit of a blind test for me. So I'm quite excited to share it with you. This is a, a bottle of it. It's uh, been bottled for two months now. Let's just open one, eh? There it is. Nice head, nice body, lovely color. Oh, <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. That's really nice looking. Compared to my uh, last one, unsurprisingly a lot darker. That'll be because of how much more amber malt um, I added to it. Yeah, I wonder if that's what's added to it, having a bit more of a bready smell. There's definitely hops, you know, you can you can get that mosaic smell, but there is more of a, like a bread smell to this. Oh, look at that head holding as well. That's very attractive, isn't it? This is a pale ale, but I wonder if it's uh, malt bill actually makes it closer to a amber bitter. Um, but you know, you get so bogged down with 
BJCP guidelines and stuff and you know, I'm calling it pale. The bread and a little bit of like a citric note, certainly, yeah, a bit woody. It's got good clarity. Um, a nice golden hue to it. Certainly not as clear as some of the beers that I've brewed using Lutra yeast, but I suppose that's to be expected. You know, Lutra is much better at making a clean, clean beer, uh, whereas Voss makes it a little bit more cloudy, got a bit more character to it, Voss. Um, it's, it's a bit more cheeky. So let's have a taste. Ooh, ooh, there's a... There's a note, there's a note at the end. There's a lemony taste to it. There's definitely a real bread taste to this, um, like lemony bread. From what I remember about my Lutra Pale, this has definitely got more body to it. You know, th well, that one ended up having um, a much lower ABV than I was expecting. This is about 5.2, 5.4, I believe. Um, and so it's got a thicker mouthfeel to it. Uh, it could be that the flaked oats are helping with that as well. Perfect for this time of year, summer. Um, I could happily drink a few of them sat in the garden um, or on the sofa or wherever, uh, you know, a nice light or, uh, you know, a, a ring light. A a anywhere, really. <laughs> this would be perfectly uh, nice to drink. Really pleased with this, actually. Uh, it's nice to drink uh, Voss again. You definitely get uh, an orange character. Um, I wonder if that's part of where that lemony taste is coming from. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a bit of like almost like a blood orange uh, taste to this, which is coming through from the yeast. There is a bit more of a, a yeastiness to this compared to um, Lutra beers that I've had, but th this is really nice. <laughs> that's not, so, you know, yeastiness sometimes sounds like it's a bad thing, but it's not like yeast imparts so much character to a beer. You could argue that's the most important part. Of course, you could also argue the malt and the hops and the routine, you know, everything's very important to brewers, of course. Is it better than my last pale? Oh, I can't tell. Um, I think they're both really nice beers. Um, maybe I'll do a video comparing the two um, because I'm not 100% sure which one I prefer at the moment, actually. I'm really pleased with how my pale ales are going at the moment. I feel like I'm happy now with making pale ales, whereas before I really did think that I was uh, doing a bad job of them compared to other styles. So good to know that really a good water profile, good technique, good pH control, which I've definitely dialed down now. Um, set fire to the comments if you need to. Ultimately, experience is the most important part of any hobby, you know? You, you, you can read as much as you want, you can look as many recipes as you want, but you just gotta do it. And I think by doing it, I've got better and I've made better beer. Um, so yeah, really happy with this pale ale and uh, I can't wait to uh, brew my next beer. So uh, thank you for watching uh, this video. Bit different to maybe some of my previous videos. I'll be honest, I really felt like my videos were getting a bit samey, so I'm trying to um, switch things up again, you know, make them, make them a bit more dynamic, you know, maybe I'll have uh, some stock footage here of something wild. Uh, <laughs> part of the reason that I started this channel was not just to share my experiences of um, home brewing and stuff like that, uh, but it's actually also because I want to get better at making videos, and so I'm trying to spice up my videos, um, which is why there's like, whoa, what, what's happening here? <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that was, you know, maybe I haven't even bothered adding an effect. Uh, oh, they're coming. <laughs> um, ooh, uh, look, I, I don't know. Uh, thank you for watching the video. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Uh, see what I do next time to uh, try and uh, keep this interesting for myself. Hey, whilst you're still here, here's some of my favourite B-roll from that Elderflower video that no one watched. <laughs>